Well, thanks for coming. Uh, really appreciate everybody being here. And this is my first media day. And, uh, you know, I've, I've watched these on YouTube for a long, long time. I used to bug Coach Rick Willis about when they were going to get uploaded because I wanted to see the spring sports and, and follow Warburg baseball for a long time. So uh, really excited to be here. And I just want to start off by publicly commending Coach Chaplin for stepping up last year. You know, he's been a good friend of mine for a long, long time. And and uh, it's not an easy situation to go from teaching PE and then two days later hopping on a bus to Florida uh, and, and what he did last year with the players. And and uh, so so many times, you know, there's there's not too many times in life where you're, you're you're called like that for him to step up. I just I really commend him for that. It's a tough situation. And so um, we're excited about starting this year. And and I uh, want to thank Mr. Cochran for this opportunity. And also, I, I had the opportunity to meet with the team last year, which is pretty unique for a, a spring baseball coach to with May term here at Wartburg. I was able to meet the team last spring, so I've gotten to know them obviously over the course of the summer, then through Zoom meetings and things and, and uh, starting fall practice. You know, um, when we did, it was, it was really good to, uh, we just have a really good, good group of guys here. Um, it's been awesome to get to know them. We have 53 on the roster and, and uh, you know, they're just quality young people. And I made my wife a promise a long time ago that if I was gonna spend as much time away from my own family as coaching requires, I'd do it with really quality people. I'm really happy to report that we have, we have really good young men in this baseball program right now. Um, this department is awesome, being a part of this, this athletic department. I don't have to go too far outside my office. Uh, you know, in the fall, go out of my office and take a right and see Coach Winter and the football staff and what they were able to do this fall. There's a buzz, there was a buzz all fall. And, and uh, I can now, in the spring, I can step out of my office, take a left at what Coach Mueller and her staff do uh, in softball is, is just really impressive. So uh, the energy up here is awesome. It's great to be home. I've lived in Waverly for 20 years. It's, it's great to be home and we're really excited about starting the season. Uh, graduated some really good players. Um, watching them from the other side of the diamond, you know, Aaron Ibers, nobody's pitched uh, in more baseball games in the history of the program than Aaron Ibers. And so there'll be a big loss. Uh, I had the opportunity to coach Malcolm Newell in high school. I know he's a good player here as well. Um, and so obviously we got some, we got some holes to fill in that bullpen and then losing our cleanup hitter. Uh, anytime you lose a middle of the order bat like that, uh, it's a big hole to fill. So we know we have some work to do. We have some, some, uh, some holes to fill, but we're excited about getting going. We're two weeks into practice. Um, and, and we've had beautiful weather. You know, that's one thing you cross your fingers on this time of year is that hopefully you can get outside a couple times. Uh, we start our schedule off with a 30-win team in Florida uh, that have played outside, and, and we, so we won't have played. Um, but to be able to get outside like we have with our turf facilities um, has been really nice. Um, and so I'll, I'll just kind of go through kind of the position groups and I'll, I'll start, it, it often starts on the mound. I'll start on the mound here. Coach Muski and Coach Goddard are our two pitching coaches. Uh, Kale Beamer returns as, a, as an all-conference pitcher. Um, we've had several guys make weekend starts over the course of, of their careers and Joey Sierra, Nick Nen, Drayton Levine, Gavin Lund are some guys that, that we've had make starts in the past and, and I think we have good pitching depth. I think we have, you know, probably into the double digits on guys that can uh, take the mound and give us a chance. Uh, it's still about your three on the weekend beating their three. Uh, and that's not something that, that uh, we've seen yet this spring uh, in practice. So we're hoping to get that solidified here. We've got a lot of candidates there. We've got some bullpen returners as well. Max Hansen's in his fifth year. Uh, Will Armstrong was the closer a year ago and Hunter Sayer pitched double digit innings too. Uh, others in the mix this year, maybe some new names. We've got a couple of juniors that are in the mix. Uh, Stephen Behrens, Jason Split, Eli Slaymaker are three juniors that, that hopefully can step up and take a bigger role than maybe what they've had in the past. And uh, Connor Funk and Andrew Robinson are a couple sophomores that, that we look forward to getting in the mix this year. Uh, newcomers on that side of the ball, we have a transfer from Southwest Minnesota State, Will Baldus. He's been a little nicked up in the fall, um, uh, but he's getting healthy now and look forward to seeing what he can do. And, th and then we probably, you know, we have three freshmen that will probably do some traveling uh, this year too. Some new faces. Uh, Brandon Ritterhoff from Birmingham, Alabama, um, uh, is a is a bright young bright young freshman that probably thinks that our coaches are on him quite a bit. Uh, that's part of being a freshman, but he's he's super talented. And it's fun to watch him grow. Logan Sullivan from Fargo, North Dakota, and Kale Funk are two freshmen too. Kale Funk's from from Edco. Um, 
Uh, Ed, Edco is actually, you know, even when I was a high school coach, my wife's favorite high school coach in the state is the Edco coach. Had him as a teacher, and he was a wonderful teacher, Aaron Hammond. So we know Kale Funk comes from a good program as well. Um, so we have a lot of guys in the mix, but it'll be interesting to see who steps up and still about your three beating their three. Catchers are coached by Hunter Destival, who played for me in, in high school, and it's probably our most, uh, most veteran group right now. We have three seniors and a junior. Um, which, which makes it a pretty veteran room. We have two returning starters, Carter Stubitz and Cole Wesley. When I was the assistant here in 21, they were freshmen, uh, and I worked with the catchers at that time. And, and so they're three-year starters heading into their fourth year. So we appreciate their leadership and, and their experience. Others in the mix, uh, Lance Geschel's a, a transfer from Southeastern, originally from Minnesota. He's a junior. Um, and Tanner Jagum's a senior from Waukee. So it's a pretty veteran group there. Um, look forward to the production that that group can provide. Infield-wise, Coach Willis, Coach Tyler Willis, uh, runs the infield. We have two returning all-conference players in Zach Walton and Keaton Gray. This might be our most talented group uh, in the infield. I think we led the conference in infield defense a year ago. Uh, Caleb Andrews has been an all-conference player. He's been a, he's been a multi-year starter. Others in the mix um, that they're hoping to take that next step into the starting lineup this year. We have Jack Bunkers and Wiley Sullivan. Uh, both both juniors um, ready to take that next step. And we have a newcomer in the mix, uh, Garrett Kadolf, a transfer from Augustana, Illinois, originally from Western Dubuque High School. Uh, was a state champ a couple years ago. I remember watching him play. He's a really good player. Um, and, and he uh, transferred to us this summer. In the outfield, Coach Jared Perkles led that group for a, for a long time. Coach Perkle and I coached together for nine years. Uh, when we're at Waverly Shaw together. That's probably our deepest position group right now. We have a lot of guys in the mix. We can only play three, but we have a lot of guys kind of battling for that. Returning all-conference player Elliot Jurgensen returns in center field. Uh, and then we have some returning starters. Sam Nicolino uh, saw a lot of time in right field last year, and Noah Day and, and Drew Conrad saw time in left field. Others in the mix, uh, we have the Morrow brothers, Benny and Leo. Took me a long time to tell them apart, so if you can do that without a number on their jersey, you're, you're further along than I was when I first started. And Aiden Tobin's a sophomore um, from Fairbolt, Minnesota, that, that uh, has taken a nice jump this offseason too. A couple of newcomers in the mix. Junior college transfer from DMAC, Aiden Brown, uh, part of our Des Moines Roosevelt connection. Pretty easy to recruit him when he had a lot of buddies already on the team. And Cole Greider, a freshman from Ankeny Centennial, could, could see some time in that position as well. Uh, American Rivers Conference looks very, very tough uh, this year. It was a two-bid league last year with, with uh, uh, Loris and BV both, both making the postseason. BV's the two-time defending champ. Uh, I would say Coe's in the mix, too. They return, I, I believe, eight starters. Um, and, and really, over the last five years, they've put together a nice run as well. Uh, I mentioned Loris played in the regional last year. Uh, University of Dubuque and and, and Central both have a lot of returning players and both made excellent coaching hires this offseason. So they'll, um, they'll probably make a jump this year too. I, I think UD has some really nice transfers on the mound that they're probably looking to build around. Plus they have obviously a returning uh, team that won 29 games a year ago. Uh, our non-conference schedule is very challenging. We open up with Grove City in Florida. Uh, they won over 30 games last year. Uh, and the second weekend after Florida, we come back, we play a Kalamazoo team who won 30 games last year. Um, and so our, our non-conference schedule is very tough. Our home opener is, is March 16th, which will also be a, a first responder appreciation day uh, on the home opener. So we'll hope for some good weather and we host St. Olaf that day and that weekend. Um, and so with that, I throw it out for questions. Kind of a two-part question, um, but with your fall season and now here in the spring, how has both the weather and the new NCAA compliance guidelines allowed you to do more with your team? Yeah, and I, I'm not a very creative person. There's probably other people that can be more creative with some of the days. So we did pretty much our traditional fall season, added a couple days, and then we used a few in the winter uh, to do individual hitting groups. Those are things that, you know, the, the guys have kind of done on their own in the past. We were able to monitor that a little bit more this year and, and get some more time with Coach Destival and Coach Willis in there. Um, so that's opened up some flexibility. Uh, it just it just seemed like there wasn't the break this year that there's been in the past when you kind of end fall ball in early October and then you don't really get the team back together until January. It was kind of nice to keep that connection with the guys through that winter season and 
and help with relationships, especially with the new coaching staff. It really helped with relationships and stuff kind of throughout that time. But I, I commend our coaches. They did a really nice job of, of really diving in. Baseball at its core is, is an individual sport. You know, one person gets to bat at a time or pitch at a time. And so uh, it really allowed us to, to hone in on some individual, you know, improvement throughout that time. Yeah, uh, with all the conference and national history in Warburg's past, uh, what are some changes that you think need to be made in order to get Warburg back competing at the top? Yeah, that's a great question. I don't know that anybody will ever win 12 or 13 conference championships in a row in the American Rivers Conference. It's too competitive right now. It's a very deep conference. Uh, when that was going on in the late 90s and early 2000s, it probably wasn't as deep as it is now. Um, so I don't know if anybody, you know, not just Warburg, but I don't know if anybody will put together a run like that. That was pretty unprecedented, and it'd be very tough to repeat. Um, but but what, I, what I do appreciate is our guys have, have, have come to work with the idea to improve. You know, we consider ourselves a developmental program anywhere I've been. Uh, it's about daily improvements, and I, I, do, I do commend the guys for that. The last several seasons haven't gone uh, the way they've wanted them, and so we've got a, we've got a veteran group of seniors right now that kind of want to flip that around and, and change that and, and move into a new era uh, of Wartburg baseball. Talking about those seniors, there's 15 seniors slash fifth years on this team. How's that helped your transition into your first year? It has, and it, it can be a challenge for them. You know, I had somebody tell me when I first got here, you know, that they've had three different spring coaches in three years. And so that, that can be a challenge to get to know a new coach and a new system. I think there's probably some commonality based on coaching trees with maybe some terminology or, or things like that. But, you know, it's new. And so I, I had a new coach my senior year of college. And, and I remember that there were some challenges with that. There's also some benefits to that too. You know, I probably had a better relationship even with my second coach as, as I became a senior and became a captain. And so, um, you know, there's some challenges with that, but also some new opportunities for some people. And I just, I really appreciate these seniors. As hard as that is to have a new coach and, and some of them are multi-year starters. You mentioned fifth year, fifth year, three fifth year players um, that have obviously had some different, different coaches and, and position coaches. For them to, to buy in the way they have, I, they'll, they'll be a special place in my heart for these guys for a long, long time, the way they've embraced the changes and embraced the new coaching staff. You have two trips on your schedule, uh, one to Florida, one to Illinois before your home opener. What are your goals for those contests? Yeah, I think we have a lot, of, especially on the mound, I think we have a lot of guys in the mix. It'd be, it'd be nice to be able to solidify some roles during that time. I've always been a coach that says, you know, we want to be better in May uh, than, than we are in, in March. And so part of that's figuring out where the pieces fit. Everybody's got a seat on the bus, but you got to pick the right seats. And so, um, you know, we got some deep position groups. You know, the outfield's a very deep position group. I, I anticipate, you know, four, five, six guys making starts in Florida in the outfield. We, we may be the only team in the country to play seven games in Florida. We may use seven different starting pitchers and just see where we're at with that. So uh, that's, that's one of our main goals, and, and hopefully we can use that information, the seven games in Florida, the three in Illinois, those 10 contests, to, to learn about our team, but also to improve. I think there's, you know, sometimes there's this notion that the, the development stops when you start competing, and I don't think that at all. We want to use those contests to learn about our team, but also then use that information and the film from those games and, and continue to get better. Um, as we go through the course of the season, see if we can't find our way into the American Rivers Tournament in May. Uh, perfect game has this year's recruiting class ranked as number one in the country. Uh, what do you attribute that to? Yeah, I haven't thought about that in a while. Right now we're kind of focused on this year's team. Uh, that did come across my desk several weeks ago. Um, I guess what I would say is it represents a lot of hard work for, some, for a lot of people. You know, Tara Winter and her staff do a great job. Uh, I know they've had challenges just this year with the delay in the FAFSA and, and things like that. So her, her and her staff just do a wonderful job of, of recruiting people to Warburg. And, and uh, you know, Tyler Willis is our recruiting coordinator. He works really hard at that. He's done a really nice job. Our coaches have all been involved with, with you know, sending out messages or, or making calls or, or hosting uh, young men on visits. And um, I guess the most important thing for me is I, I think we've tried to recruit really quality young people um, that, that fit our style of play and that, that come, you know, good people, good families seems to be a common theme. Um, and, you know, when you're a new coach, there's I've been a new coach now three different times. It's my third coaching job, third stop. And there's, there's uh, 
sometimes a narrative that a coach is trying to bring in their own players and and uh, you know, I just I just don't think that at all. I, I mentioned that I had a new coach my senior year. I really appreciate that he didn't he didn't treat me like that. He embraced me as his own. Uh, we've we've certainly tried to do that with our players and and anybody that buys into the values and and beliefs of our program is is certainly one of our guys. Whether that means you're a, a 17 year old on a recruiting trip and you buy into the values and beliefs of the program, or you're one of our three fifth year seniors who have all bought into the values and beliefs of the program. Anybody can be our guy if they're going to do it our way and, and put the team first and, and follow our core values. Coach and I lived with Shell Rock for 15 years following the Warburg program for that many years. Uh, what does Warburg baseball mean to you? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, uh, competitive excellence first, first and foremost. You know, I've seen, I've been, I've been in the stands for a lot of those dog piles. And, and so competitive excellence would be a place to start. You know, some of my best friends coached at, at Warburg for a long time. Casey Chaplin, who stepped up again last year, but he was a long time assistant coach too. Uh, Corey Carlson coached here. So I remember, you know, getting to pull back the curtain and, and figure out, you know, what, what everything that was going right in, in the baseball program here at that time. Um, I've had a lot of former players play in this program. And, uh, and so I've, I've certainly, in my, I, I would say from afar, but, you know, being in the stands and, and getting the curtain pulled back, I was, just, I was an assistant coach here twice. Um, and, and both those times being able to get a behind the scenes look at just what made Wartburg special and Wartburg baseball great at that time. Uh, you know, we took a lot of things from, from those conversations and those experiences when I got to be an assistant here two different times. We took a lot of those things into our program. We took a lot of those things into our college program in the last two years uh, as well. So I, I just feel, I just feel uh, uh, honored that, you know, I was able to pick a, a part of those things and now be in charge uh, of, of this program. It's really humbling. Do you have captains for this season or is there like a leadership group? Uh, yeah, we have a leadership council uh, comprised of, of some, some upperclassmen and then some underclassmen too. So I think we have 11 total on that council right now. Uh, after a uh, scary health situation back in December, do you have an update on how Will Armstrong is doing? He, he's doing great. Um, I, I don't know if and when he'll be able to play uh, baseball this season, but more importantly, you know, he's in good health. He's in good spirits right now. Um, and and uh, obviously that was a scary situation. Right, right during finals, actually. Um, but uh, he, he's doing great. It's, it's good to see him at practice. He's at practice every day. It's good to see his smile back, and, and the guys sure enjoy having him around. So uh, I don't know what baseball looks like. He's not really cleared to do a whole lot right now. I don't know what baseball looks like, but there's certainly more important things uh, than baseball, especially in that situation. So it's just been awesome to have him at practice and just the, the morale boost of, of his energy and his smile, and, and it's been fun to be around him again. Good luck this season. Thank you.